Nothing ever happened in Willowbrook that wasn't quite normal, and that was always the case. The citizens of the town were content with their lives, and daily routines were unremarkable. However, all of that changed when the Carnival of Lost Souls showed up. This carnival came on the outskirts of town on an exceptionally cloudy evening, with its ominous black tents and pulsating lights. The townsfolk saw the installation of the carnival's rides with a combination of interest and apprehension. The carnival appeared out of the fog like a ghost from another universe. There were no bright banners or enticing music to draw people in. Only the creaking of the rides and the far-off chatter of the carnival employees broke the oppressive stillness that hung in the air. As darkness fell, curious locals began congregating on the perimeter of the carnival grounds. The carnival's rides and games were unlike anything they'd ever seen before. Against the night sky, the Ferris wheel seemed out like a skeleton, its rusting metal groaning with every revolution. The carousel's once beautiful horses had been swapped out for hideous monsters with gaping mouths. But it was the enormous, run-down funhouse that served as the carnival's focal point. The building's fading sign read, The Funhouse of Horrors. The entrance was hidden in the darkness, making it look like a frightening sentinel. The funhouse was emitting a low haunting song that drew the locals in. A tall man with a battered top hat and a long black coat, the carnival's barker, stepped out into the crowd. He said, Step right up, ladies and gentlemen, with a voice that made everyone shudder. Come on inside the funhouse of horrors for a night you won't soon forget. Uncomfortable as they were, some people came forward anyhow drawn by the prospect of something truly extraordinary and terrifying. They paid their admission and disappeared into the maze. The air within was heavy with a musty, ominous fragrance creating a stifling environment. The twisting, turning, darkly illuminated passageways led further into the Funhuse. As they progressed, they could feel the walls closing in on them and hear ghostly voices. All of the rides and games within the funhouse were gruesome -y. The mirrors in the Mazi warped their images into eerie caricatures as they wandered along corridors decorated with macabre artwork that seemed to come to life. It seemed like the ground was continually changing beneath their feet, making the surface seem uneven and unsteady. The town folk's anxiety grew as they made their way through the twisting corridors. The group discovered they had unknowingly joined an inexplicable carnival of horrors, Fear set in as they desperately sought an exit from the Funhousey, which appeared to be acting on its own nefarious agenda. The Carnival Barker peered out from the darkness, his eyes shining with evil pleasure. Night had hardly begun when the innocent citizens of the town found themselves caught in a terrifying maze from which they might never be rescued. The residents of the village were lost in a bizarre and terrifying maze within the Funhouse of Horrors. Twisting and turning in the gloom, the hallways seemed to take them further into a twisted and unpleasant world. It seemed as though they were descending into lunacy with each step they made. There were frightening murals all over the walls, depicting horrible scenes of writhing and contorting figures. The townsfolk's reflections in the distorted maze of mirrors distorted into hideous, nightmare versions of themselves. The funhouse seemed to take pleasure in warping their very selves, when they continued to wander in circles and deeper into the maze, panic set in when they realized the pathways they had entered were continually changing. The funhouse's warped acoustics made it hard for them to pinpoint one other's whereabouts while shouting in the eerie quiet. They continued farther into the funhouse, where the temperature dropped and a palpable sense of doom descended. It seemed as if the walls themselves were whispering, like they were inhabited by evil spirits. The voices muttered, Welcome to our world, with a disturbing blend of laughter and hate. The town's captive residents gradually realized that the funhouse was more than simply a carnival attraction. It was a dangerous other universe. It appeared to be fed by their terror, which it then turned into twisted and fantastical illusions. One by one, their worst nightmares and most cherished memories came true. Sarah, a young woman with a crippling phobia of spiders, was trapped in a web inhabited by enormous spiders. Mark, who had always been tormented by the recollection of an accident he had experienced as a youngster, was made to undergo the ordeal all over again. Fearing drowning, Emily found herself in a nightmare aquatic environment, gasping for oxygen that never came. 
the amusement park had evolved into a place of psychological torture that preyed on its guests' weaknesses and phobias. The terrible thought that the carnival's barker had lured them into this wicked trap lingered in the minds of the locals as they battled to find their way through the ever-changing corridors and face their own personal tragedies. The shadowy creature appeared on the outskirts of their field of view and watched their suffering with sick delight. Their desperation mounted as they sought in vain to escape the maze-like structure, but the passageways kept getting narrower and more convoluted. The air was thick with mocking murmurs that only became louder as they tried to break free. The besieged citizens of the town began to worry that they would never make it out of the terrifying maze as night fell. Their worst fears and regrets had come to life at the carnival, which had previously been a haven of light-hearted fun. The fun house of horrors real terror has yet to begin. Once you entered the fun house of horrors, time stopped having any significance as the twisting, distorting passages and the townspeople's own anxieties and regrets tormented them. They battled to keep their wits about them. Sarah, caught in a terrifying spider web, felt the creepy, crawly legs of the insects all over her body. Her terrified shouts reverberated through the winding hallways, but no one heard them. The barker at the fair smiled sadistically as he watched her get tortured from the shadows. Mark kept having horrific flashbacks to the accident he had as a kid. He was still trapped in the same vicious circle of anguish that had caused him so much grief and anxiety as a youngster. Underwater, Emily begged for air that would never come. She felt like she was about to drown as the water pushed down on her chest. She dug her nails into the phantom floor, her hopelessness deepening by the second. As the confined townsfolk fought to overcome their own fears, they came to realize the carnival and its barker were up to no good. It was not a safe haven where they could forget their troubles, but rather a terrifying underworld that thrived on their worst nightmares. The barker at the carnival seemed to take pleasure in their plight once he had enticed them into this nightmare. His appearances were few but always left them feeling uneasy. His voice was sickeningly seductive and his eyes flashed with malice, invitingly, enjoying the show, my dear guests? He mocked their suffering with nasty comments. The stranded citizens of the town knew they had to find a way out of the maze, but the constantly changing corridors thwarted their every attempt. They attempted to stay together and help one another get through the hell they were experiencing. But the fun house appeared to take pleasure in breaking them up and giving each victim their own unique set of nightmares. Their optimism dwindled as the night progressed, and the carnival's dark secrets became more and more obvious. They found that the funhouse had full of dark history in addition to being a location of psychological torture. Diabolical exhibits depicting horrible scenes of bloodshed and agony were hidden around the winding passageways. Artwork depicting evil powers at work hung on the walls, creating an eerie atmosphere. They found out that the carnival and its dark energies had been connected to the town of Willowbrook by a dark ceremony performed there many years ago. Blood and sacrifice were used in a rite to assure the carnival would last forever. The town's captive residents learned that they were not the first to be affected by the curse of the carnival. The fun house of horrors had trapped generations of visitors and their pain further strengthened the carnival's evil spirits. But there was a ray of optimism because of this new information. For them to free themselves from the fun house and the curse, they knew they had to confront the carnival's barker and put a stop to the ceremony that chained the carnival to Willowbrook. A renewed resolve born of desperation gave the group of imprisoned town residents the strength to go on through the twisting corridors and face their worst fears. They were aware that the carnival barker held the secret to their freedom and that the showdown awaited them deep within the nightmare funhouse. The group of town residents locked within the funhouse of horrors got more determined to remove the curse as they made their way further into the center of the attraction. They realized their only chance of freedom rested in ending the dark ritual that chained the carnival to the town of Willowbrook. The hallways kept warping and bending, and their own anxieties and regrets materialized in horrifying and torturous forms. Emily's nightmare under the sea got more terrifying, Mark's childhood tragedy became more gruesome, and Sarah's web of spiders grew wider and more stifling. However, nobody in the group gave in to the nightmares. Together, they bolstered one another, knowing that their power lay in their solidarity. The hopelessness that had held them since entering the carnival was broken through by their feeling of purpose and resolution. 
The carnival barker's taunting persisted and his visits grew more regular and sinister. He seemed to take sick delight in their pain, even savoring it in his wicked way. Your nightmares are my entertainment, he snarled, his voice reverberating across the ever-changing halls. There is no way out of this for any of you. The town's residents, however, were not going to give up without a fight. Now that they knew the carnival's sinister past, and why it was so important to put an end to the ritual, they were more prepared to face the carnival's barker. They continued forward inside the funhouse, where more evil exhibits showing brutality and pain awaited them. The macabre reality behind the carnival's ritual was gradually revealed as each horrible tableau was unveiled. They found out that the carnival barker had struck a Faustian deal with evil powers, trading their souls for the perpetual life of the carnival since generations of Willowbrook residents had unwittingly contributed to the carnival's terrible influence, the town had become the focus of this cursed agreement. As they proceeded into the depths of the funhouse, the party found a secret chamber. They entered a room and saw an altar with mysterious markings all over it and candles around it. This is where, 